Hello everyone, I want to welcome you once again to this video. Today we are going to look at literature paper 3 or literature at A level or advanced level and we are going to particularly look at novels. Okay, I want to thank all that have subscribed to my channel and I want to request whoever that is watching this video for the very first time to just subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out anything. In this video, you will be introduced to advanced level literature novels and also to the novel Devil on the Cross by Ngujiwa Thiongo. Okay, stay tuned and please enjoy. Um, we have three questions that we have to understand particularly. The first one is, do you have any background information about literature? Why did you choose literature to do at a level? And then, what are your expectations in this subject? These three questions will be very important. To help you stay tuned to your subject of literature at a level first of all if you don't have any information about literature because you may not have done it at all level your teachers may take you through and it will really be important that you stay tuned this is very easy but then if you don't know reasons as to why you chose literature it may be very difficult for you to engage with a subject whether individually, whether on YouTube, like on this channel, or even in a class with your teacher. So, you need to understand why you chose the subject, and that is going to lead us to what your expectations are. What do you expect to, you to gain from this subject? Okay, these three questions, once they are answered well, then they are going to help you understand the subject even better. Okay. Literature has been defined by very many people, very many scholars in, in different ways, but the message still comes to one thing, that is that way of creativity in which language is used to express a message, an idea, or a feeling. I have one of the scholars in literature, a Ugandan or Kot Babitek, uh, who defines it as all creative works of man expressed in words, whether sung, spoken, or written. Meaning that everything that is sung is actually literature. But then it is supposed to be creative. Everything that has been spoken, the way you speak, can actually be literature. So long as it is creative and different from how another person does it. And all the written works of literature can also be called uh, creative works. So long as they are uh, they are written works of literature. So, when you combine creativity and then you put it in words and you write it, you can also be doing literature. Okay. And then another person defines that an imaginative or creative writing, especially of recognized artistic value. So, this one puts a recognition that it, the work has to be recognized and it's supposed to be artistic. And this is, this is going to bring us back to creativity up here. So, meaning that on overall, literature can be defined as an art of man in which language. It can be written, it can be spoken, but is creatively used to express a message or a feeling about that person in society or even themselves. So generally, this is how we can understand literature. Okay. So, uh, literature in English, especially in some African countries, has been at level syllabus since uh, 1959. That is when secondary schools were actually being introduced in the African countries uh, during the time when colonialism was heating up. And maybe some countries were struggling to get rid of it. But that's the time when literature was also gaining root in the secondary schools in Uganda. Literature, especially at A level, comprises three poems or genres, and we have these three prose and poetry is always paper one, plays or drama is always paper two, and then the novel or and the short stories is actually paper three. Okay. Now, the three papers are actually interrelated and you don't have to study one of them thinking that when you know one, you have known literature. No, 
they are interrelated and the knowledge in one of the papers will enhance your understanding of any other paper. Just to take an example, paper one, which we said is prose and poetry, will equip you as learners with literary skills of comprehension, interpretation, analysis, and also application. These are actually very important in the analysis of the rest of the papers, that is paper two and paper three. But also, it will also equip you with important life skills. Skills actually include this, comprehension, interpretation, and analysis. Why do we study literature? Now, all our um, curriculums will actually be linking to this particular reasons that when we do literature, we're doing it, number one, for pleasure. Okay, particularly for pleasure that we shall, it will always promote a variety of reading skills which some of us take as, for, uh, as pleasure but after even these reading skills are taken some of us go on to write and when we write we act and in the acting either in the music or in the drama or in the dance I know that is going to be pleasure so if you don't read it for pleasure then you can act it and then we can also view it for pleasure. Then number two is that uh, literature will help us to shape the affective. When we talk about the affective, we're talking about the heart. It will help us to shape the heart. That you as a student should be able to have feelings for others and the surrounding at large. You should have self-esteem and respect for other people's feelings. So, through the very many characters that you'll be interacting with in the novels, in the poems, in the plays and other books that you'll be reading, your heart must be shaped to have pity, to have responsibility over others, over yourself and also the surrounding. But also to develop the cognitive. The cognitive in here, we're now talking about the mind, your mind that should be able to understand and critically analyze different situations of your life and maybe of other people's lives. That you don't look at a situation and you take it the way it is, roughly. You need to understand why and then how possibly you can solve the problem. And then the most important is actually the, uh, developing the psychomotor. Psychomotor you're talking about applying your hands. Okay where you as a student will be expected to use the skills you're going to gain in literature as a subject to write your own pieces but not just writing you'll be writing them creatively you'll be communicating things fluently and you'll also be doing it thoughtfully analytically and effectively so in other words you're not going to study literature and end there you need to be able to write apply what you have learned in the subject. Then you also be exposed to a variety of oral and written works of literature from Africa and the rest of Africa so that you can gauge your own works. Also for the purpose of appreciating literature in English to enhance your linguistic or artistic or artistic beauty and creativity. Developing the dependent personal skills like problem solving, critical thinking, right decision making, and a purpose for researching and a managing of information systematically. You'll also be able to appreciate the differences across the various genres of literature. Effectively comprehend, interpret, analyze, illustrate, evaluate, and apply all that has been presented in literary piece of writing. Those are the objectives of studying literature so above all to also prepare you for the range of opportunities in your career for example for people who are going for journalism for mass communication people who want to become teachers of english language and literature in the future especially in secondary schools and then also in tertiary institutions and universities we also want to be working with uh, with editing and publishing houses you can also want maybe to write academic books and others you are going to be in the right place as far as literature is concerned okay so we're going to go to look at the novel perspective okay you all had a definition of a novel perhaps you are doing literature 
at senior one and some of us maybe we didn't do and that's why he brought this up okay a novel is different from a poem and what is the difference a novel is supposed to be a book so it is a kind of a, a, a fictional prose that is an extended one which considers a number of characters settings and also themes which cannot be possible maybe in a poem okay so i want us to particularly look at the major elements that we shall be analyzing in each and every book the major elements that your setting centers will be setting for you or will be setting questions from in each and every examination these are the elements that you must understand critically as you read each and every novel okay the very first one is setting when you are reading any novel you should understand what the setting is you may have done something about setting with your teachers and this one is going to be particularly true okay so when you're doing a novel you should understand the physical or the geographical setting this would include the rural would it be urban is it in a room what is the weather like so by understanding this you'll be able to know why particular themes happen in a particular setting you'll be able to understand why particular characters behave in a particular way the second type of setting that you will need to understand is the time or the historical setting when is the book taking place where when are the events in this book happening is it during the colonial period is it before colonialism is it in the evening what is it is it in the afternoon is it after world war ii is it during the world war ii then the social setting is also very important what economic activities take place in the novel or in the section of a novel what religion do these people believe in what are the values what are the cultural norms that these people engage with the second that you have to understand is the title what does the title of the book look like is it an ironic title is it a title that reflects what is happening in your society is it a character title for example test of the duba virus is a character title okay some of you may have read emma is also a character title but then we have titles like footprints of the outsider one of the novels we're going to be covering here it is a title and it communicates something so do you expect to see footprints in the book do you expect to see the outsider and anyway what would the outsider mean what would the footprints mean devil on the cross look at the title hmm? then we have the intention for writing why do you think the writer writes this book okay all these things you have to understand them and then the story and the plot development story and the plot development will help you particularly to understand the plot of the book and be able to answer the question that we call the context question if you fail to understand the plot line of the book it may be very difficult for you to answer what we call the context question so you need to also make sure you understand the plot and this can only be done when you read a book okay the other one is character and characterization as you interact with a book you're going to meet characters you don't have to just look at them at more you must understand why does a particular character behave in that way the themes and ideas questions rotate around these aspects what theme is being communicated in the novel or what themes what ideas are being communicated what does the, the the author raise the atmosphere what atmosphere do characters interpret uh, 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 interpret in the in the question is it the atmosphere which is related to what happens in our community and then what does that atmosphere bring how does it make the characters react then we have the narrative techniques you also have to understand them how does the author bring out this theme how does he portray this character using which narrative technique then feelings evoked in the reader and those portrayed by the characters you also have to look at them how does it that character feel and why does he feel like that then we have the moral lessons you must also understand because every time the writer puts across their ideas 
they are communicating some lessons to you readers. So what lessons does a particular author intend you to learn? Then writer's point of view is also very important. Where does the writer stand to narrate the story? Is it omniscient? How does he view the point that they are, they are, they are talking about? Okay, these are very important aspects that as a student of advanced level must understand if you pass literature. These are the aspects where questions are set. When you stay tuned, you will be seeing one by one of these aspects being analyzed for each and every novel and you will see which questions are set in every aspect. Let's look at Devil on the Cross. Okay. Book uh, was published actually in a native language called Kikuyu in Kenya. It was called Kaitani Mutharabani. This in English means Devil on the Cross. Okay. And particularly language of Thiongo intends to bite so much the capitalism that the Kenyan society tries to adopt in the time after her independence. Okay? The, the capitalism that comes to bite so much more than colonialism. This novel was first published in Kikuyu in 1980. Okay? And like I have already mentioned, it is so much looks at the, the too much capitalism in the, in the country after independence. So it is a story which is going to talk about Jacinta Waringa, a very young woman who moves from the rural areas of Kenya to the capital looking for a job after she has qualified as a secretary only to be exploited so much by her boss and even when she quits the job she feels at first that her problems are actually linked to her alone but she now understands that the problem is actually a big one. The whole country is suffering because of this kind of exploitation and materialism. So that is the photo of Guji Wathiongo. You may need to know about him, of course. This gentleman, Guji Wathiongo, was originally known as James Yongo Guji, but then later changes his name to Guji Wathiongo to mean Guji, the son of who? Yongo, trying to deny the Christian names to embrace the Africanness. His work includes a lot of novels and short stories, essays, and other literary pieces of work. And just a glimpse, we have novels like Whip, Not Child, we have The River Between, A Grain of Wheat, Petals of Blood, uh, Devil on the Cross, the one we're just looking at right now, and very many others. We also have Wizard of Crow and, and uh, many other short stories like Minutes of Glory. Okay, so uh, Devil on the Cross is written when this gentleman, Gujwa Thiongo, is actually in prison and is in prison because he writes a novel uh, which he, he calls Arumare When I Want, which annoys the, the, the former president who provokes his going to prison. So this book is written on toilet paper while he's in prison, which later is discovered and uh, Nguji is, uh, uh, is separated from his work, but later, uh, I don't know by what means, the book comes back to him and he completes it and is published. Okay. Uh, the title of this book is something that we have to analyze and understand critically. When you look at the title, Devil on the Cross, it is very unique. We formally know that it is Jesus who is on the cross, but we made this book and we see that it is instead the devil who is on the cross. It is very ironical, but also symbolic. So, do we expect to see the devil, the physical devil? We have seen the photos of Satan being crucified. Okay, this is something that is very imaginative. So, who uses this? Um, uh, to be uh, as a uh, 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 biblical mythology to make an origin and a conflict between good and evil. So, like we said, that um, among the very important aspects to look at in, in a novel, we have a title 
you need to also examine Devil on the Cross as a title. Okay, this will be in another video though. So what is the general plot of this book? This is going to be very general just to attract the attention of people who may have not read a book and maybe who want to make a choice of whether to read a book or not. This novel begins with a, 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 a voice that uh, begins by showing the confusion or doubts of whether they should, should be able to tell the story or not. Because the story is actually very shameful and uh, also sad. He is actually the prophet of justice, qualifies himself to be that. But as we go on, actually in chapter 2, we, we, we see that this person, this voice has accepted to tell the story. And uh, we are introduced to Jacinta Waringa. Just like we have already talked about uh, the character, you need to look at who Jacinta Waringa is. is our major protagonist of this uh, book. She has just been our uh, present, sent away from her workplace. That is Boss Kihara, who attempts to to, 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 to take her for a uh, ready to yield or wants to take her to bed. And because she refuses, she has to leave the job. Then when she mentions the same thing, the struggles that she goes through to refuse the advances of Boss Kihara, we see that her own boyfriend, Johnny Kimwana, rejects her. Such betrayal is what she goes through, and as we meet her, she's actually a very frustrated lady. Okay, because of the frustrations, she attempts to kill herself at the railway station, and uh, fortunately, there is a voice, a hand that comes to rescue her. But even when she's rescued from death, as if she's taken much more to something that is harder to handle than death, for she's handed an invitation card to the devil's fist. This is very frightening, even if it were you were given a card uh, that the devil has organized a function at Nambole, maybe National Stadium. It would really be so frightening, and I don't know if you'd be able to attend. Okay. So, um, at the, 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 the Matatu Park, she boards, and the unfortunate part of it all that she meets a very naughty driver, Mwaura, who actually is a worshipper of money. Very unfortunate. But she's not alone. She's joined by other uh, passengers later who also seem to be perturbed just by looking at them. You look at the people who are not going to communicate, or who will communicate once in a while and keep quiet. People who, 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 who will communicate after a very long period of time. Okay, This communicates a lot about Kenya, mm, individualism. So the, the passengers actually include Katuria, a foreign educated African uh, studies professor. And uh, this one talk about foreign doesn't mean it comes from abroad. It's just that he has gained foreign education and then we have Wangari an old woman a represent we have Moturi a worker with uh, these general workers and then we have Muriru Amukirai who they refer to as the man in dark glasses until towards the end of their journey that he comes uh, up to speak and we come to know him then these are the people who decide to move to the devil's fist because all of them actually get cards in that very matter too. So uh, at the devil's fist, however, uh, the organization has taken on a good route and it has to start, but then it is somehow hampered in the later time when the police comes in, uh, Wangari and uh, Moturi decide to call in the police to come and arrest these people who they think are the thieves because of course Wangar has come from Nairobi with a task to help the police stop uh, this kind of, 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 of evil in society. So it is somehow hampered and the people of course some people die and others are arrested and a lot, a lot of things actually take place.
Yeah. So the most unfortunate thing is that when Wangari brings the police, uh, instead of the police arresting the thieves, the police instead arrest Wangari and then Moturi, who also leads a march of furious Morocco students and workers and also intellectuals and peasants towards the cave, is also instead arrested. Okay. So that is how ironical the thing is. But then after two years, uh, Waringa and Gaturia are actually engaged. They are in love. And therefore, Gaturia has already told the father in his home to organize because he's bringing home a, a, a visitor. He's bringing a girlfriend and the father is very happy even if he knows that the child actually doesn't do what, what uh, he wished uh, he should have done in business. So uh, when Waringa reaches uh, the party, he's very disappointed that the same man, the rich old man actually who had impregnated her when she was in senior two, is the man that she's seeing as Gaturia's father. It is very unfortunate that she, she has to, to kill the gentleman and some of you other guests have to, to die. And then uh, Gaturia has nothing to do but to just watch what is happening. They cannot decide whether to run after Waringa or to remain and console her mother, I mean his mother. So by the time we reach here, actually the novel is getting done. But then we have to understand what exact themes does the author intend to communicate to us as the audience? The very first one is actually the concept of neocolonialism. We have greed and materialism. We have exploitation. This one will take on all forms of exploitation, sexual and even physical. Then we have injustice and oppression. We have corruption. We have change. Suffering is also one of them. Okay. We have hypocrisy and betrayal. This one can be joined actually. Hypocrisy and betrayal can be joined. We have advocates for unity, despair or disillusionment. We have also women's fight or women's liberation. Now, all these are themes and ideas. And this first one is actually a concrete theme. This one is a concrete theme. It is a theme. This one is also a very concrete theme. This one is a theme. Suffering is also a theme. Hypocrisy and betrayal is a theme. Advocates for unity is more of um, is more of an idea. Despair and disillusionment is also more of an idea. Women's fight or women's liberation is also more of an idea, but it moves towards a theme, including change. Okay, so these are the things that we're going to be looking at in, in the next videos and I want all of you to stay tuned. We're going to begin looking at character and characterization in the next video. I want to ask you to just subscribe to my channel, L-E-L-L, -L, Learn English Language and Literature, and you'll not miss anything that I put up in this channel. Thank you very much. Stay tuned.